Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Cash That. This is your host, Joe Delera. This episode is once again brought to you by our good friends at Props.Cash. Props.Cash, the best player prop betting tool in the market. You need it. You love it. You've got it in your phone. You've got it on your computer. You've got it on your tablet. All those red charts, the green charts. Hopefully, the charts are more green than red, especially when you're betting on them. And you can get it for 25% off your first month with code Delera25. One of the things that I like about Props.Cash is that you have so many different sports. And with the the switch from N- NBA to really like MLB and WNBA during the course of the summer, they have their own projection tools that are really helpful for you because not all of us know every single sport, but we still want to get a little bit of action. And you can get that all in the tool for 25% off your first month with code Delara25. Um, so this is going to be a really exciting episode. This is game five of the NBA finals. Weren't sure if we were going to have game five of the NBA finals, but I brought in a heavy hitter here. I've got uh, the B mat on. So, uh, Brian, how you doing today, dude? Hey, doing well. I love how you say you got a heavy hitter on here. It feels like the strategy was look, Joe predicts the series is going four games. Let's book Brian <laughs> for the fifth episode. <laughs> and look, oh no, now here we are. No, I'm, I'm excited to be on, man. Appreciate it. Dude, it's me. funny. I, I, I figured like when I messaged you, I was like, yeah, like I need to plan at least five games uh, because there's no way this yeah. thing is a sweep. And uh, I, I got nervous. I was like, man, we're not going to get to do our show. This sucks. Yeah, that's what so. I was thinking. I'm like, well, I guess, hey, there we go, you know? <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, Brian, for the people that haven't had you on the show, I know you have a huge following on Twitter. Twitter, you've got 90,000 followers. Um, but just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, like where to find you, where your work is. I know you, you've you been working with the Action Network a little bit more recently in a, in a different capacity, doing some video, putting some pics in the app. Uh, yeah. But tell everybody where to find you. Yeah, so yeah, again, at the BMAT, so the underscore BMAT on Twitter uh, is where you can find me. But, you know, uh, working with the, the team over at the Action Network started this football season and then been talking with them. I'll be back uh, for, for next football season, do the uh, touchdown show with Jill and Charlie. But uh, working there, then I'm over in the, the Moonshot Discord uh, with Kill Kenny over there, just having a good time hitting some bets. And uh, yeah, so I think that's I think that should pretty much cover it up. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good way to start. So uh, we're going to talk about a little bit what we've seen in the series. I've had a number of different guests on so far uh, for every game of the, sh- of the finals, and it's been pretty one sided, honestly, up until this show now where we have, you know, the Mavericks put on a shell shocking performance in game yeah. four. And now the craziest thing and one of the quirks of the NBA, right? The Mavericks are actually outscoring the Boston Celtics by six points in the series after game four, <laughs> um, despite obviously being down three, one um, from your takeaway and from what you've watched, what is your like number one takeaway from this series so far, or the one thing that you've been kind of like cycling through your brain that you find interesting? Yeah. So just, I'm looking at the matchup and I think just, you really realize like how much of this it falls on when you look at Dallas and, you know, there's so much talk with the Boston side of like, well, who's the best player. And, and, you know, and honestly, at, at a certain point, you start to say like, does it really matter? You know, as long as they're winning games and I get that, you know, we all like to have the debate on, on who's the best, but I just look at it and it's like, all right, who's that third score? Like I'm, I'm waiting for that third definitive score on the, the Mavericks. And, you know, the matchup obviously favors the Celtics. I just, you know, it, it just seems like something. And my main takeaway from last game is, you know, like really is this kind of a sustainable, um, you know, for for the Mavericks. Like they they shot at a high clip. And then you look at the Celtics, you know, they they couldn't get anything to fall. It like really reminded me of game two. And I was telling you earlier, you know, of the Celtics Cavs series where it's like, look, when you live and die by the three, you're going to have, you know, a night every once in a game where like nobody's making threes. It doesn't happen. Yeah you know, often, you know, oftentimes you'll have, you know, you, you let's say Tatum and Brown aren't shooting well. It's like, all right, well, maybe Derek White and Drew Holiday are, right? Like you'll have, you know, there's, there's the ebb and flow there, but, you know, occasionally you get the nights where it's like, they don't make anything. So, uh, you know, eight for 35, uh, you know, from the three point line, 20, you know, 22%, 22.9%, I believe, you know, that's just, that's the night where you look at it and you're like, yeah, nothing's going in. So, so kind of my takeaway is I don't know that this is sustainable for the Mavericks, right? Like, I just don't think the the Celtics are going to go out and, you know, have all, you know, four or five shooters have a terrible shooting performance. A hundred percent. And and like, honestly, like one of the things that I noticed, because I wrote the game guide for the Action Network as well, was um, Dallas, they scored 60 points in the paint and they out-rebounded Boston by 21, 52 to 31 on the glass. Like that is 
crazy, right? Exactly. They had 13 offensive boards and Derek Lively had seven of them. Um, so just an incredible performance there. And I, it's kind of, you know, I think Lively is really good. I think that Lively is somebody yeah. that should continue to find a lot of success in this series. Um, and there's a couple like schematic things that I think are going to help keep him on the court. But I know that there's a prop that you've been targeting for Derek Lively that you've really liked uh, over the past couple games. It, are you going to yeah. st keep sticking with this, or you know, is this a, or is this an angle where you want to pivot off of him? No, I'm I, look, Derek Lively, I, I've got to keep running this one. This one, I think it, I was expecting it to open a little higher. And so, you know, when I was looking at his points plus rebound line, I thought, yeah, OK, we're going to do this again. And then also what I did, I went ahead then and I put a half unit on the double double, which if you build it out manually on DraftKings or bet MGM, uh, you can get plus 300. So you can get a little bit better odds. Um, the rebounding chances and opportunities are off the charts. Uh, you know, I mean. We even, you know, we even saw Derek Lively hit a three pointer uh, last game. That was crazy. I know, I know that was wild, man. And I, I, I don't know if you're running the ladder uh, for, for this one, but <laughs> like, I mean, that was wild though. And, and then you look, you're like, man, he can't make a free throw, but guys out here making his first career three in the finals, you know, it's like, uh, so yeah, I'm running the double double as well. I, I've got to stick with it. I just love the energy he brings. And it's just, you know, it seems like he settled down after he was, you know, going a little uh, wild there in game one. I agree. Uh, so I like that the over 17 and a half points plus rebounds. And to be honest, part of why I really like it too, is one of the things I was watching in the film and you probably noticed it too, was the Mavericks. They started doing it like late in game three, but then they really did it in game four was they had Derek lively for the most part. Cause he played the most minutes, but the, like they either had lively or the big, and they were basically playing like a single man zone. And yeah. it was keeping them from like, cause lively was getting in trouble. Cause he was going out too far. He was going on the perimeter, getting, picking up fouls like it, yep. he and he wasn't fast enough right but by having him there it kind of helped contain some of those blow buys like i know we kept seeing those stats about luca yeah. like blow by percentage yeah. whatever this really helped contain that and it forced the celtics from like having to take they were getting like good layup opportunities to then having to send the ball out to the perimeter and yep. even though they're a good three-point shooting team it's still just added to that variance level that you know with boston they're a three-point shooting team when you shoot that many threes you can have some of these bad games so i i yep. think to me keeping lively in the paint is going to even be more helpful for his rebounding chances and some of his scoring opportunities as well so i i really do like that play um, when you're looking at Boston because of the level of three point variance that, you know, they kind of invite, is this something that you think could plague them again in game five, or is it something where it's like, ah, eh, it happened. Um, but you know, it, it's almost more of an anomaly. Yeah, that's a good question. I honestly, I just think, look, it's, if you look at the overall body of work and you say one game, you look back to game two of the Cavs series, that, that wasn't something that, you know, plagued them the rest of the series. They, they got back on it. Uh, it wasn't a big concern. I just, like I said earlier, I think it's more of the kind of like the outlier or anomaly status where it's like, look, man, if you shoot a lot of threes, right, it's just, there's going to be a night that, you know, all the stars align in, in the wrong way and, you know, your guys aren't hitting them. And that's what we saw. And I mean, the three point percentage is bulked up a little too with Hauser in there, you know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, I mean, the guys weren't hitting. And uh, so, yeah, to me, I just think like it just you could kind of see like the effort. It was like, all right, I, I don't think tonight's our night, you know, so I, I think that's more of an anomaly. I think moving forward, like you're going to have a couple guys that are uh, that are hot and shooting well, especially when you've got that many three point shooters. So I'm, I'm not too concerned. Yeah. And I, and I think one of the things that I thought was interesting, at least from a takeaway perspective from the game, Dallas won this game. They made 15 threes. Boston made 14. So Dallas still barely won yeah. the three-point battle. They took fewer threes. So it's like, it wasn't even that. It was just like Boston just couldn't make a shot from two point yeah. range at all. Um, they really struggled. And, you know, yeah. Dallas obviously got to the free throw line a lot with, you know, maybe it's Scott Foster special a little bit there, but uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it seemed from watching the game and, it's one of the things that I think I'm most concerned about with Boston in game five is in game four. I think this, when we look at this, no teams ever obviously come back from a three Oh deficit in yeah. any, any NBA series. Right. Um, Jalen Brown finals MVP favorite. Um, and he's been somebody that, you know, we've looked at and we're like, all right, like he's been incredible. He obviously won Eastern conference finals MVP, but the conversation and the narrative has never really been like 
Jalen Brown's the best player on the team. Like as much as Jason Kidd says it, like we know where that was coming from. Like he's like, yeah, I want to yeah, get in there. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. Yeah. To me, it almost felt a little bit like at the beginning of this game that Tatum and Brown were like trying to get finals MVP in game right. four. Like the ball was a little stick. Did you see that too? Or was it just me? Yeah, oh, 100- a hundred percent. No. And also too, like, let's, I, I, w- I played the, like I had a, you know, like a small bit of action on Jalen Brown first quarter assist. And I think after like four minutes, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is definitely not, <laughs> not hitting. I mean, I was watching them. I'm like, these guys are, it looks like they're trying to outplay one another. Like who can put together the best start exactly. this game? And it was like, and then it just went off the rails from there. So it was like, you know, all the, uh, yeah, the team ball kind of went out and it definitely looked like, all right, who's getting this trophy, you know, kind of Tatum, you, know, you can tell like the pressure was a little bit on, man. You didn't get the, uh, you know, the Eastern Conference MVP. And I know they're not going to they'll downplay it. But yeah, he definitely wants it. Yeah, I, I agree. Because I I've been riding the Tatum over first quarter points prop. Um, yeah. It opened six and a half, seven and a half. I still continue to like it in large part. It's it's about Porzingis more so than like this narrative. I think they they don't they don't hurt each other right like it's it's helpful to have the narrative oh, yeah. um but he's now hit this in like 11 of 13 games in the playoffs without Porzingis the rotation's different he plays the whole first quarter um and I'm comfortable with Tatum as the primary engine of the offense taking those yeah. looks taking those opportunities to me like I don't want to blame Brown for like what happened kind of in game five or game four rather for like the start but like Brown to me is not the guy that should be making the decisions on offense. Like it's like he gets yeah. the ball, like he finishes possessions, but if Tatum starts with the ball, cause he's kind of works like a pseudo point guard. If he gets the ball mm-hmm. and he wants to facilitate, if he wants to score, that's on him. Like he can do that. Like, and that's acceptable yeah. under Boston's scheme. So to me, I still think that this is a little bit, I th- still think this is fine to play. Um, as opposed to like, and I think Brown maybe has to take the step back where it's like, look, the offense will come to you, but you know, like yeah. if you, you just might have to be really efficient to continue to keep this like finals MVP locked down. Yeah, no, I agree. I think like Jalen Brown too, what was it? The game that he, I mean, I, what did he, I can't remember what he finished like t- in the high twenties, he almost hit 30. He may have, but what do you have four at halftime? Yeah. I think he had, so th- he, I think he had 30 and he had like, he had like nothing before he had like, yeah, like crushed the third quarter. Yeah. Four or six points. And I'm not saying like, that's, I'm not saying that Jalen Brown's going to have a third quarter like that. And yeah. you know, it, again, but look, the, he doesn't need to rush it in the first quarter. Like, like you said, you know, let Tatum kind of, and we've seen from Tatum, he looks really good facilitating the ball. I know that like irks a lot of people because they want to see him yeah. score a lot, but you know, it, he looks natural when he's doing it, you know? And I, I think that, He's the guy that's got to do it. I, I think I was kind of blown away with the last two games and Jalen Brown's assists. And oh, it's crazy. You know, I think that yeah, was wild. So I think, you know, I had a little a little bit of action on that, too. And I was like, OK, yeah, that, that one's not that one's yeah. not hitting either. I, I felt. Yeah, I, I think I wrote I was like, oh, maybe you could dr- like sprinkle a little bit of like game assist leader because of, you know, like the potentials <laughs> are there. And like, dude, just like, yeah. no, like, no, Nothing, right. <laughs> yeah, I think did he, did he even have an assist. Um, I, I think you might have had one, but you honestly might have had none. <laughs> Right, that's good for pride. That's good for pride. At least you can see he had one though. You know, yeah, it's like I he, he almost tried. It was an accident, probably. Um, <laughs> but I, to me, like I, I'm looking at this game, I can't see a scenario that Porzingis plays. Like I, I no. there were some clips coming out of practice, and they're like he's he's not even he's barely moving, right? Like, do yeah. you think he plays? Yeah. No, I I think it's gamesmanship. Like unless we need him, like what? That's what just does that very, mean? I think <laughs> it's a level of gamesmanship. I think they know that he's done for the series. I just yeah. think. Anytime that you have a th- now, don't get me wrong. When Shams tweets that, and I'm like hitting, you know, all right, like translate on everything. Like, what are we even talking about here? But you know, I mean, anytime you hear the word tear, and especially with Porzingis, you know, his injury history is is deep, and it's not like right now they're in a position where it's like we desperately need him back. Now, if Dallas somehow rallies off, you know, another victory here, yeah, and you know, maybe maybe game six, all right, maybe, but. Again, I think you have to weigh like the, you know, the, the cons of it all. Like, is it worth it? I think this might just be, you know, all right, we kind of have to plan for him. He's dressed, but, you know, he's he's not. It kind of feels like the Jared Allen thing. I keep using the Cavs as like parallels here, but like where it's like Jared Allen's working out today. And it's like, okay, he's been working out now for two weeks. He's, he's, he's like, he, you, he bro, play. you're not working out. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? You're not working out. Like, and then I think it was just like he is present at shoot around. It's like, all right, well, that's better. Yeah. So it just feels like he'll be he'll be dressed. We'll talk about him being questionable. But man, I just it's got it's gonna be real tough. Like you said, man, you see him like walking around with somebody and it's not like he's doing much, but he 
he's moving like you know a little bit ginger. So you're like, oh, yeah, right, I don't know about and, that. And Xavier Tillman talked about it today. Actually, he got he got questioned a little bit, and he was like, well, like he's still he's still like a little uncomfortable. Um, so you know he's definitely not moving around the way that he normally does. So it's like the the Celtics players are even like a little bit more open about yeah, it. Like, like, yeah, like yeah, like we're like yeah. dude, I, they, <laughs> and they know I'm sure this is like it's gamesmanship, man. And you're at this point, right? You, every perceivable edge that you can possibly have, you want to have it, right? Like Jason yeah. Kidd saying. Look, Jalen Brown's definitely the best player on their team. We know. It was you know everyone insane knew that comment. Right away. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane. It's like, all right, well, it almost worked, right? It almost worked, but uh, no, it was. It's definitely I, to me. I I can't really see a scenario where Porzingis really is going to play, um, and I think that that's you know another reason why we can look at this and say like, all right, well, Horford, you know, Horford, he starts obviously, he plays a pretty heavy chunk of minutes, but at the same time, like we are seeing Tillman, we are seeing Cornet, we are seeing a little mm-hmm. bit extra Hauser, and it's part of why like I like Luca again in the first quarter. He's getting that shot, um, the pain killing yeah. shot. He scored thirty. 13 in three straight first quarters now um granted a lot of it's been after a loss and that's part of the cap there but at the same time he mm-hmm. is just coming out focused and at the same time these are must win games so yeah eight yeah. and a half nine and a half whatever you're grabbing it at i'm still pretty comfortable riding this uh if you want to keep hopping on the first quarter train with me here i i think that they're a pretty exploitable market i just so, just so you know, I tailed you on both. Again, we're just we're riding we're riding till the wheels fall off. And then I even ran like the hybrid. I told you before we got on here. I ran Luca eight plus first quarter points and Tatum six plus first quarter points. I got yeah. it. Yeah, like I think it was plus one hundred five. So I'm uh, I'm very pot committed on those first quarter props. But look, even if I don't hit it this game, Joe, we've been we've been cashing these. For, we've been doing good for you know a couple games now. We're all right. Yeah, oh, yeah. I I felt bad because I. I didn't, I didn't like tweet it out because I was just like, I think it was like degenerate, like at four in the morning, like feeding my child <laughs> and I was like putting in some parlays and uh, I put in on bet three, six, five, I put in like Luca 10, Tatum 10 and Derek lively three first quarter rebounds. And it was like 22 to one with a 50% boost. And it was like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh, I, I can't share money. this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't share this with anybody. <laughs> no, I was like, this is embarrassing. Like I can't put this out here. Um, <laughs> what, so, was like, what am I doing? <laughs> but I do think it's, I do think it's interesting. And I do think that, um, you know, having Tillman out there, and like that lack of Porzingis news even helps your lively cap even more because yeah, exactly. they just don't have to cover him on the perimeter. And that was one of the things that I noticed watching some of the film um, from game four that I found interesting, right? Because they didn't um, like, because they don't have to guard him. Um, you don't, and you can play that zone with like the big, like the one man zone with the big. Yeah. It almost like helped Dallas's defensive rotations from like getting out of sorts, because I feel like that's something Boston does so well is because of the ball movement, because you have to yep. cover everybody that teams get like out of sorts, they get scrambled. And then there's always like a weak spot because nobody's really super selfish, but because Tillman isn't able to punish you. Like I know he made the corner three, like, whatever like you're gonna give him that every time (laughs) like um but to me like that is one of the concerns that i have with boston where like okay boston should win the shooting should regulate but at the same time does this make it now harder for them to you know to keep building up that like I don't want to call it like an immunity, but uh, they're o- they've always been able to kind of like give that extra punch against Dallas. Like Dallas cuts it to eight, yeah. then all of a sudden it's a twenty point game. Um, yep. It, yep. Do you do you find that like even just those like little nuances in the series can just actually really swing things pretty dramatically? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, like when you can have lively playing like almost as like a pseudo safety, you know, yep. like just roaming and covering more ground as opposed to you know running out with somebody. You know, it it just changes the complexion of the defense. So if somebody does beat the first line of defense, let's say Luca does, ha- you know, someone blows by Luca, it lively is down there to protect. He's within a a range, you know, where he can come over and affect the shot. You know, whether he can block it directly or or you know force the pass. But yeah, I think you know Tillman being out there, and you know, I think Hauser's been shooting well, which you know it's like yeah. the life of a three point shooter, right? Like you go through highs and lows. So right now he's shooting the ball well. He's got an ability to stretch, but none of them can do what Porzingis did or you know does so no i think it does open up a lot of opportunity i just i'm waiting to see like you, we're gonna have to have a you know it feels like at this point we have to have a poor shooting performance from boston and then we'll have to have like a herculean effort from either Kyrie or luca and then get a big performance from a third player 
you know, who seems to just be like, all right, it's going to be just kind of a player later to be named at this point. Uh, for yeah. The Mavericks. Uh, agreed. You know? so, I agreed. And I want to touch on Hauser for a second. We gave out, a, yeah. I gave it a prop with uh prop bomb, Steve Keach uh, on Twitter a little bit earlier today, under two and a half rebounds. Not totally sure where the juice is right now. I'd imagine the minus minus one thirty is like non-existent. Um, yeah. I think you can take it to like at least minus minus one fifty. Uh Basically Luca targets Hauser with switches and, there's, you know, it's it's a really tough matchup for Hauser. Um, you know, maybe we'll maybe those minutes will get cut because he really did play a lot of extra minutes in the blowout. Yeah. So just a couple things there. Um, at least, and I just kind of wanted to put that play in for the podcast in case you didn't see it on Twitter or whatever. Um, but for the Mavericks, you were talking about a third player. The yeah. third player always seems to be like we don't know who it's going to be, right? Yeah, and right. it's like, c- could it be? Could it be like PJ Washington? Could it be Lively? Could it be sometimes it's like, can it be Kyrie? Right. Um, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're like, you're hoping for that. Uh, talk to me a little bit about PJ Washington because PJ Washington seems to be the guy that you're like, it should be you. Yep. Yeah. Help all me. Right. Like, tell me. Yeah. Like- so P- yeah. <laughs> PJ's like, all right. So look, PJ Washington rebounds have been just another one that I've, I've been playing this entire series. It's, it, it was at six and a half, I think, you know, games two, three and four yep. you know he's gone over in each game this series outside of you know game four uh, i think he finished with three rebounds and so i that's one where i don't get scared off you know per se by you know it's like all right, if a guy's got a trend going and you know it falls off in a game where they didn't play the full you know allotment of minutes it was you know a little out of hand early the situation was you know kind of a little quirky although you know one hand i'm like that, that boston couldn't make anything you know in that sense you think all right pj washington should have you know ample rebounding opportunities but I do like PJ Washington. He's just, it's one of those where it's like, you feel, he's the, he should be the third guy. At least he was, uh, you know, kind of in the first couple games. Or, yeah. You know, but then you're watching the fourth quarter. You're like, Maxi Kleba finally took a shot and made it. Uh, <laughs> you know, so maybe that's good for confidence. And THJ, uh, you know, made Dude. Shot. <laughs> can we talk about <laughs> No, I, look, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not even, I was going to mention at some point, like, do you think that he can carry that forward at all? You know, and it was like the, those Maxi Kleba THJ minutes, though, in game three. We're some of the worst minutes of the playoffs. We, we got to talk about DH day for great. a second because I like the I yeah. like the PJ play, um, but we got to talk about we have to talk about PJ or about T, Tim Hardaway because All right. the dude is like sixteen po- like a, a fifteen point scorer on the regular season, contended for yeah. sixth man of the year. What the fuck? Like he's just been dude, and he's been nowhere. Like and you're like the the he is the logical guy. Like when you look at kind of the profile of you know, all right, coming off the bench, he can. All right, he can he can shoot. From, he's been awful. Like you, we, we can't no bones about it. He has been terrible. And then the fourth quarter, I'm watching. I'm like, yeah, thanks for doing this when I don't have you know when nobody's <laughs> got any you know any actual bet you know bets with no. you in it. So yeah, I bet he's him. going off, and I'm sitting there like, come on. I bet him the other day. To us? I bet him the other day, and he, he didn't, didn't play. play. You just didn't play. Yeah, like yeah, hey, at least you got the void. Yeah, and yeah, then he goes yeah. out and looks like their best, yeah, their best scorer in the second half. It, yeah. it was it's unbelievable. But the thing with THJ that I think was so fascinating right is just like he made five threes so i don't know like i I was never a great basketball player Uh, i was a hustle guy i was a great offensive rebounder defensive rebounder right like i was i was a good rebounder um and and i still wasn't tall i just was i just was a body i could box people out right so um to me like (laughs) when you're watching some of these games right and it's like I, i i don't know like i would imagine the confidence is helpful like it probably does carry over, but I don't even know if the minutes carry over. Like, do you think that after that kid is like forced to play him? I, I'm, I think maybe you have <laughs> like, you give him a, a slightly longer leash in the limited yeah. minutes he gets and you see, all right, how's he looking his first shot or two. And then you, you know, you make you get call, one or two shots. <laughs> like, right. Hey, look, and then, ah, you know, it's like, Hey, look, short leash, bud. But yeah, I mean, like, look, if you're thinking about it though, like we're talking about it, there really hasn't been like a guy that can fill up, you know, who's been scoring in, in like large quantities, like outside. And I know that obviously Luca and Kyrie, you know, yeah, they are going to you know, look. That's the lion's share of any offense, of course. Guys. But there needs to be a third guy that's you know, like I keep waiting. Like, is it going to be Derek Jones Jr. on any night? You know, or but who's it going to be? I think 
Yeah, I don't know, but I I don't think you can give THJ too much extra no. extra minutes. And they won't even give really us a don't. line. Like they won't even give us a line. No, it's it's a hundred percent. We won't see that. <laughs> so even if we wanted to get crazy and try it out, it's like they won't let us. They won't let us have fun. There, there's no chance. There's no chance they no. want to show us to no. us. But uh, I I always I think it's fascinating for a couple different reasons though because there's so many different guys that kid can play um and they're yeah. all like kind of similar right like you have thj you have josh green you have dante exum yeah. you have maxi kleba like there's so many different players yeah. they all are just in that group of like huh, like they're like okay they're okay but maybe they could fit okay. in yeah. this matchup if you had to pick out any of them is there a player that you think you know makes the most sense for Jason Kidd to play in this spot? Honestly, from what I've seen, no one's screaming like I need those minutes. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, look, I think when you need offense, right? And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you give Hardaway some looks. But I also think like Kleba is also, mind you, he came back early from injury. Like he, there were games where you'd watch him and you're, he won't shoot. Like it didn't look like he wanted to shoot at all, you know? And then, all right, he made one last week. I just, I don't know that there's anybody that, you know, really is saying like, I, you know, I'm demanding these minutes. So it seems like they always get kind of scattered out or distributed evenly between the Josh greens. And, you know, it's, so I I just, is there, is there somebody that you see and you say, all right, you know, after, after game four, now I think you got to get him on the floor a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the dude to me, I like I, I think Dante Exum makes a lot of sense here because Excellent. he's pretty malleable defensively. Um, he's six foot six, pretty long reach, a pretty good wingspan, can make a yeah. three if tasked with doing so. Um, it just has that ability. And I think that he can guard multiple f- positions. Like, I think he's a pretty good defender, um, yeah. relative yeah. to like t- obviously like a Tim Hardaway Jr. or somebody like that. So to me, I like Dante Exum. Yeah. Over one and a half rebounds and assists. This is just, these are disgusting props when we're, we're talking about some of these guys here. Uh, but over one and a half rebounds and assists, when he's played at least 10 minutes, 100% hit rate on the season between 10 and 20 minutes, 29 for 29. What's the, Okay. I was thinking maybe we had like a five game sample. No, no, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a big sample. sample. It's 29 for 29. He averages 4.6 rebounds and assists. There's some spikes here. A lot of, a good amount of twos. Um, You know, if we had to jump it to even two and a half RA though, still 22 for 29, 76% hit rate uh, between 10 and 20 minutes. I can totally see him getting like, 15 minutes or so uh, of like meaningful yeah. time. And even if we, even if we drop it, cause like, we'll we'll try to get even a little bit more conservative. Even if we drop this to like 15 minutes between 10 and 15 minutes on the one and a half, it's still a hundred percent hit rate on the two and a half. It's still seven for 13. Um, so I think that there's oh, wow. some pretty good room here and that's at two and a half. So I think that there's plenty yeah. of room here at one and a half where it's just like you're just gonna get it because you're gonna get like either a bogus rebound, you're gonna get a pass yep. that you send to Luca or Kyrie, and they just do something incredible with the basketball. Um, just so many opportunities to get there for you know, it's just a usage stat to me, the way rebounds and assists are. I like that actually. And I, we were thankfully you told me about that before we jumped on. So I was able to, uh, to run over and tail as disgusting as it is. Like, I think you've seen some of the picks that I was log that I log in the action after yeah. the season, like huge Mo Wagner guy. Like, Oh yeah. You know, like I'm a big, like I wait, I like the late lines, right? Like the ones where people are like, dude, who is this guy? And I'm, you know, they're, I love those. So those are like the last couple of weeks. I think I, I sent you a message. Though. I was like, dude, this is like paradise for me. The last, you know, like the last week of the season where it's just madness. People are getting ruled out left and right. It's like, um, so no, I like the action play and I'm, I'm actually in on it. But yeah, man, I mean, I, one and a half is, is a very low line. And like you said, I mean, you can be standing somewhere on the court, you know, you're, you're going to luck into a rebound or two. And yeah, like you said, when you've got score, you know, playmakers and scores like Luca and Kyrie, something, something can happen there. So I like Agreed. that. Agreed. Yeah. So I, I got a pretty disgusting one too. I already told you an air, an angle I played with Derek White. That's not like, Oh yeah. I need to, he, we need know, to talk about angle. this one. So, we need to unpack. Yeah, this, one. I, and, and this is like the first, this is like the first one I told you, like I told you, I like some, you know, uh, some, some kind of off the wall type props, you know, you, you always got to have a few of those. So talk so, to me about Derek White. All right. So yeah. All right. So look, I've been playing this now for this is, this will be 
the fourth game in a row, third game in a row. Okay. Uh, he did not cash for me last game, but I'm, I'm running Derek white. I'm going to go a half unit. I at least put a half unit on it. Uh, Derek white, two plus blocks. So like we're getting down in the nitty gritty. Like we all know what he does, right? Like he, Derek white can block anybody. You yeah. said it, whether it's a chase down, there's like nobody he won't go up and contest at the rim. Right. So I love this. I love this play. I love the odds that we're getting. And I think if you, when you go back and look, let's like we talked about earlier, let's, Let's operate under the assumption that Chris Stapp's Porzingis will not be playing yeah. this game. If we go back and look, and it, it look, it's juiced to like minus two fifteen if you play the over zero point five. But if you go back and you look at three of the last four games without Chris Stapp's, I think we're looking at four blocks from Derek White, three blocks from Derek White, two blocks from Derek White, and then zero last game. And look, I chalked that up to look. They weren't making a thing. They no. they knew they weren't winning the finals in, the, in that game. I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna go up and, and contest guys at the rim when we're down 20. So yeah, I'll, I'll get it back at home. So I'm going back. I'm not worried that he had a game off. I'm going back to it, and we're gonna go Derek White two plus blocks. I think it should be. Uh, I think it was plus 165 when I played it. If it's uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. But I, I love this play, man, and it's it's fun. I was telling you earlier, like. I, I had a couple buddies I was with and sweating out. We all had we all had money on a Derek White uh, block ladder. So man, it was like the wildest thing when he cashed. We were just plus two you know, ten. We were like, yeah, man. Plus two. Hey, 10. all right, then plus two tens. So yeah. Look at that. So I I love it even more now. And so yeah, I'm like we were we were going nuts. I think he got the uh, you know he he cashed the uh, the two plus like in the first or second minute of the You're- fourth quarter. So. <laughs> It's just a different sweat when you're when you're waiting for a, a block, you know. For sure, you're like yelling at the TV. You're like, "It's a block! It's not a steal! Like it's a block!" Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah. The game doesn't even become fun. It's not even like enjoyable. No. Are you kidding me? How's that a steal? What? <laughs> so, like of all the things yeah. that we're complaining about, right? Um, I know. I'm, my people are like, "You really took like? Why? Are you, who's the guy talking defense in here?" Uh, <laughs> exactly. So before you know, before we kind of get out of here and like do a little bit of a recap with some of the bets i am you know we've never had i've never got to have you on the pod before um i I wanted to talk to you briefly a little bit about like your process like what do you do like when you sit down and you're like i'm gonna unpack this slate um like i like to usually come in just say like all right like i you know i always have like a couple players in mind that i'm like all right i think they have a good matchup here for x y and z reason um what what's kind of the way that you attack a slate um, especially like the finals is a little bit wonkier because, you know, obviously we're hyper-focused on one series, but it, and it obviously yeah. is a little bit different yeah. in the regular season. Yeah. So, I mean, look, the first thing I, I, I tend to do the same thing that you do, whether it's football, basketball, I look at, I look at guys where they jump out to me, regardless of what I think their line is going to be. I'll check that later. You know, and if the odds are where I like them, you know, I'll play it. So I like to have a few guys. And then honestly, it's straight to, you know, uh, Prop suck. I love prop suck cash, man. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like I was even, I told you earlier, I was betting the euros and don't think that I, you know, wasn't getting some, you know, I had to get some stuff or MLS. I had to get some, uh, some data and they had you know MLS up for me. So even when I needed some sweats on something that I'm not too familiar with. So, you know, I really just go through, take a look. And I like to go through like the Derek white blocks, right? Like I love finding things where maybe there's not, you know, this, this heavy, um, you know, traffic or, or bottleneck of action coming in on, on a single prop. And I think a lot of times, like, you know, the one and a half, uh, you know, RA with uh, with Dante Axum, like those are some of my favorite props because I feel like everybody is, is like you said, it's you're you've got like the the blinders on for like the Jason Tatum. Yeah. The, you know, the Kyrie, the Luca of the world, like everybody, everybody knows like, all right, they are going to be involved somehow. Right. Like in, in whatever you're playing. Uh, so I really love like taking a look at things maybe, you know, that don't jump out as much. And uh, yeah, other than that, man, then after that, it's like, you know, you got to watch. Uh, got to watch a little film and then it's back to, you know, seeing, seeing some movement. And then you just like, you know, thankfully YouTube's got a good, you know, well, we YouTube's got a lot of good resources. Can, yeah. The condensed games are fantastic. I like, we got to be honest there. I agree. So, the the yeah. condensed games are awesome. And it's funny that you mentioned like actually watching the game because like, the, I think that the data like helps, right? Like it's always important, but like, yeah, if you yeah. don't understand what the fuck's going on, like you don't even know what to look for. Oh like, yeah. You're not, no. Yeah. So, and that's like, that's the thing. Like I, like my, the way that I operate is like the, the data should never be used as like your end all be all, right. Yeah. It should be used to support what you're, you know, and you don't like, you're not going out searching for bets to make like, all right. Like, like you said, like I've got some spots in mind or maybe you're going through and you're like, I didn't even know the spot existed, but I yeah. kind of like it now that I, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very much like you, you got to watch. Cause 
it's like, you know, it's any sport that you're betting on, you know, you really like, especially there are a ton of live look opportunities, things like that. But yeah, I think that, you know, if you're not watching the game, like there's always like a 30 minute portion of the game that I'm missing because I'm getting my kids to yeah, bed. You're doing something and with so, the kids, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, you got recorded by the time I get back. So it's like, you know, you got to get back and it's, it's a little easier to watch when no one's around. You got like, you know, some, some peace and quiet coffee. Uh, so yeah, normally just, just jump in. But yeah, if you're, I know I'll see like a lot of people, you just use like the hit rates or, you know, it doesn't it's work like, man, it, right. Yeah. Every, no, no. It's like if you're looking at, all right, well, Kyrie had two terrible games in a row. He's obviously going to have a terrible game in game three. You know, when they go, back. <laughs> no, that's, see, that's not how it works. Like, you know, so uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. You got to watch. No, yeah, some of the hit rate stuff's crazy because it's like I'll see stuff and it's like, I'm like, this is like, you're talking about something that happened like seven years ago. Like, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's, it's hitting 345 in the last 346. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm like, all right, guy. Like, it just it just doesn't matter. So, yeah. um, but I do yeah, always appreciate when somebody brings in a little bit of film, like that actually like kind of watches the sport, understands the sport, because um, it just it just makes it so much easier uh, to you know to understand to and then I think to explain it to other people because it's like you're saying more yeah. than just like seventy five percent chance, like seventy five percent hit rate. You're like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. like schematically or game plan wise, or this is the thing that we saw or whatever. And it's like, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I, yeah. I understand the data is obviously super useful, but you know, there's, there's only so much you can do, I think with just the data. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, there's like the feel, you know, you gotta have the feel for it too. You gotta, you gotta know what's going on. You, you know, when, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and if you, and if you follow basketball long enough, you realize like you cannot uh, box score watch. That is like no. a, no, you know, like, all right, well, he's done this. I, he's got to keep doing this. Yeah. It's, it's, and like it's, it's yeah. like if uh, it's like if how if, if people talked about last game and just box score watched to be like, oh, my God, like they benched Tatum for how like, like <laughs> I got to go. I got it. I got to run that Pritchard Hauser combo every game, you know. <laughs> Although, did you not watch that in the fourth quarter? I don't know if you've had any uh, Pritchard Hauser, uh, you know, little like little you know, you less GP. Game, yeah, Boston might be a blowout, right? Yeah. And then it's so I'm, I'm like, I did not predict this the opposite way. No, and I'm watching Hauser cash, you know, hit threes and and uh, you know Peyton Pritchard assisting. I'm like, this is hard to watch. <laughs> I love those guys. They're they're awesome. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah. all, it's like all those yeah. little like all those extra guys, like the granular guys, like the bench guys, like. There's always so much yeah. opportunity there um, to to find a lot of value, just because people don't even, number one people don't even know who they are, um, and then also you know it's like the lines just are all always like wonky, especially during the regular yeah. season. So uh, it'll it'll be good. We'll probably we'll gotta get you on next season for NBA. Uh, you know, like right when we're kind of getting into yeah. like who is who, or like is there some value here, um, and it should be a lot of fun. But Brian, I know uh, this ep- once again before we get into our final segment here, I wanted to recap a couple of the bets. Um, so I know that you're on lively over 17 and a half points plus rebounds plus a double double mm-hmm. build it out. You can get plus 300. You like PJ Washington yeah. over five and a half rebounds and Derek White two plus blocks. For me, I like Luca and Tatum over their first quarter points lines. Dante Exum over one and a half rebounds plus assists. Sam Hauser under two and a half rebounds. And uh, I tweeted out earlier Jalen Brown under two and a half threes, but that line is just nuked right now so like maybe throw it in a parlay but um it's it's kind of unbettable at this point but just wanted to put it out there for you guys um now once again obviously this episode was brought to you by props.cash brian honestly gave the better the best ad read that i it was unprompted and he's talking about how props.cash <laughs> something we use it every day um but look Brian uses it. I use it. A lot of a lot of smart people use it as a tool, you know, in their portfolio of things that they have to create their bets, to create their cards. And you can obviously get it for twenty five percent off your first month with code Delara twenty five. Uh, even if you don't know what the sport is, and like we, you know, we kind of mentioned, it's like it's helpful if you watch. At the same time, it can at least give you a little bit of a baseline to understand, like what am I expecting? What should I be looking for? What are even the things that I need to be watching out for? Um, and maybe there's some under underlying data that you can kind of start digging into to find your footing and kind of get through your process and learn some new things depending on the sport that you're watching. Um, so highly recommend them. I think they're the best, you know, tool in the industry for this type of prop betting. Uh, and you can definitely get them for 25% off your first month with code Delara 25. Now, before we get into our last segment, I'm going to preface this for everybody. So normally, obviously, we do pods and recs. Pods and recs is a segment of the podcast where we recommend anything. It could be whatever you want. Like it could be a beer. It could be a, an entree. It could be a thing, a new thing that you're doing. But given that it's Father's Day, 
and both I and Brian are fathers, I asked Brian to come prepared with his favorite dad joke <laughs> for the listeners here. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta like, you gotta give me like a really subtle lead up, man. Cause now I feel like, all right, we'll just, let's, let's do this. All right. So, <laughs> no edit. All right. So it's just like, all right. So look, all right. It's more, all right. Here, we'll just jump. So in 2020, I didn't do a marathon. I didn't do one in 2021. Didn't do one in 2022. Also didn't do one in 2023. This is a running joke. <laughs> That's it. I love it. I and love honestly, it. I think the other one I had, and I can't remember, was like, how come the Hulk doesn't lose his pants when he transforms? Why? <laughs> because the experiment altered his genes. <laughs> That's good. That's also good. That's also so good. I, I had, I was like, you know, I couldn't pick which one. I'm like, yeah, I'll see if I can work that second one in there. Dude, I, I got a couple. Well, I used to do, I used to do a segment when I, segment, uh, when I, I don't know, I was bored. Like when I was, uh, law, I was working at a law firm and I used to, uh, every lunch on Fridays, I would do dad joke Fridays and I would tell <laughs> jokes on like Instagram. Uh, I would just tell like dad jokes, like a couple dad jokes every Friday into, into like the stories. So I've got like a little bit of a portfolio there, but it's been a little bit crazy because honestly, because like obviously I was doing it then, but this is the first, this is the first year that I've had my son. And it's just like ever since then, now when I tell a dad joke, I'm no longer, it's like I'm no longer a faux pas, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. So I love that one. And then uh my other my other favorite one that I've got is when does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. <laughs> Hey, that's a good one. I think, I think I, you know what? I think I may have, I may have seen that one earlier. Hey, I don't know. Now, now you know, like now you got it. Now you put it in your portfolio of dad yeah, jokes. Hey, another perfect. arrow in the quiver here. Yeah. I don't have quite the extensive resume as you do with dad jokes, but now I got, now I'm starting like a little baby collection. I know. And you've got a head start on me in terms of uh, the years of being a dad. So yeah, that's I, right, man. You know, yeah. but uh, I've, I've got to put some more miles on my tires here, <laughs> So, but it'll, you know, it was Brian, it was a pleasure, obviously having Having you on love sharing some dad jokes with you along with the props uh once again just to remind everybody where to find you uh where to get your work and we'll get you out of here yeah so again uh at the bmat so the underscore b-m-a-t-t -T. uh you can find me there on twitter uh you can find my picks at the action network uh also over in the mooney gang discord with kill kenny uh so you can find some some plays over there as well and uh, other than that, Joe, appreciate you having me on, man. It was a pleasure. Dude, thank you. And once again, happy Father's Day. Let's continue Likewise. to cash that.